Hello and welcome to Reef Girls Reef Wrap Up number 11. We're going to start right out with a bunch of ugly. This is the shallow 50 gallon Rubbermaid trough that I'm using as a refugium. And check this out. The Catomorpha is collecting all kinds of detritus, which is turning into that gross, red, slimy, ugly stuff. I've been taking it out with a net frequently, but I need to do something about this. It needs more flow. So I took one of the many nano power heads I have in my collection. You can see the flow it's generating is really good. It's going directly into the Catomorpha. I cleaned a whole bunch of that awful stuff out and this just started running maybe 10 minutes ago. I'm pretty optimistic because there's a lot more surface flow than I expected out of this little power head. Next up in the never ending frag cleanup. Yeah, this is the Astriopora. It has got vermetids on it, bubble algae. So I finally pulled it out. I'm going to clean it up and drop a bit of peroxide in the gaps where the coral's not growing anymore because of all the crap that's on here. Poor thing. And there it is after cleanup. There is a lot of crap growing on here. Man, oh man, I had no idea. I may have to pull it out again and try and peel away some of those vermetid snails. This, this is really a shame because this was quite a pretty coral. I can only hope that it comes back. Well, we moved some rocks in here last night. And this morning, I see we have a hitchhiker. This little guy. Cool, because I don't know if you can really see it, but there is definitely an algae film starting on the glass. Looks like he's doing a good job. Look at him go. Here are the last of the rocks that I currently have cooking outside of the sump. Okay, so time for more rocks to come out of here. The ones I'm going to focus on now are the ones that have been here for a while. And I'm hoping to make enough space that I can completely empty the trash can. Yep, everything's out of there now. Finally, after months and months and months, everything that was in there is now in here. This rock right here has only been in here for 24 hours. And look, it's already a different color than the one right beside it that I just put in a few minutes ago. So I'm encouraged by that because it means that I should be able to wait maybe two, three days and at least get some kind of, I don't know, seasoning on these rocks before I take them upstairs. After finishing messing around with rocks, I did a couple of small water changes, two gallons on this tank and five gallons on this tank. I also did about 15 gallons on this system here. I stirred this up really well with the hose when I was putting the water back in. And you can see all the silt in the water. So I'll come back in about an hour and make sure that none of it is settling on any of the corals too thickly because I don't want to smother them and I know most of the flow in this tank is up top. One more thing we did is we added a bubbler to this section. There you can see the bubbles on the surface and we put it on the air pump. And you notice you can't really hear it because <laughs> it's pretty quiet. And the idea here is try and get the pH up. So we spent some time moving a few more rocks up here and it turns out we have not just one little hitchhiker, but two. So this will inspire me to be extra careful about the water quality in here because I really don't want to kill off these poor little snails with ammonia spikes. Okay, let's see if we can spot the royal grandma. <gasps> there he is right there. Doing extremely well, sorry for the blurry. It's quite dark in here, but he's doing really, really well. Super pleased with him. Got him from the coral reef shop and already has grown quite a lot. When he sees me now, he comes out looking for food. Everyone in here is doing well. I've got a couple of new corals. 
That is a turban area to replace the huge one that I lost, which by the way is coming back in a couple of spots. So we'll see how that goes. And there's a new trachophilia. And another coral I got was uh, a cinerina that's in this tank. There it is right there. There's my other big one. And that's the new one. These corals are changing a bit. They all kind of, I don't know, look a little weird to me. So I'm hoping they're not going to start checking out on me. That would be a shame after all this time. Signs of life on one of the rocks that we put in here. Noticed this last night. And I think those are colonial hydroids. Yeah, I'm going to pull that rock and I'm going to spray this area with hydrogen peroxide. Yeah, they spread really fast and they do sting corals, I've seen it. So those are going to be obliterated if I can get them because I don't want to have problems down the road. I know there's probably more in here that I can't see, but you know, you do what you can. Well, look at the bonus that came on my black hole favia that I got from Big Show Frags. Yeah, it's a nice juicy aptasia. So it's a good thing there were some peppermint shrimp in stock. Just placed an order there and ordered a shrimp. So in a couple of days, little guy will arrive and we will put him to work in here. And here's that Astropora frag that I cleaned up of all that algae. A week later, and it's looking really good. And there's my maize brain. Oh, there's a royal grandma coming out for food. There's the maize brain that's in here. It's doing good. So it's been a struggle to keep the parameters where they should be on this tank. And I had no business buying SPS frags and expecting that they were gonna survive. What's left has been moved over to this system just because it's more stable and established. And you know, I might get three or four out of the 15 or so that I originally bought. Yeah, that's a pretty bad success rate, but it's my own fault. And update on the observation tank. Fish are all doing great. The female angelfish had an outbreak of lymphocystitis. And so I did a couple water changes a couple days in a row, added more Celcon to the food. And you know what? She is looking really good now. I can't see any signs on her that, that the lymphocystitis is in outbreak. So we'll see, hopefully she recovers. This is my green long tentacle goniopora. You know, this thing, I'm not giving up on it because these polyps are coming out a little more every day. So we'll see what happens. And the long tentacle plate coral looking fabulous. There's my orange Yuma. I also treated two of these mushrooms, these two right here, with calc paste to get them away from my toadstool coral because the two of them are interacting not in a good way. The toadstool has been closed up for weeks and I just finally decided it was time to do something about it. I think that's a war that I'm going to have to give some help to the toadstool. So in 24 hours or so, I will remove the mushrooms because they'll have loosened at the foot. This is CC Reef Keeper's recipe, by the way. Calc paste injected directly into the mouth of the mushroom when it's open. And I've done it before here. I've removed probably three or four, and it works every time. Gorgonian's looking fabulous. Gonna have to decide what the best place is to put this guy in the new tank to take full advantage of the size. It's, it's really beautiful. This green mushroom down here came out of the blue. Don't know where it came from. And back here we've got the Oolophilia, which is another type of maize brain, and it's actually spreading down here. So I'm encouraged by that. I was a little worried for a while that it was receding, but nope, it's doing really well. And of course the Xenia, they're hanging in there. And this is a sunset Montipora all over here. And you can just barely see the color of the skin in some spots. Uh, there's zillions of polyps out on it though. Okay, so there's my 
there's that mushroom yeah, probably 12 hours after I applied the calc paste. Yeah, so you can see the tentacles are shrunken in. That one as well. And look at the toadstool opening up again. I don't think the Gorgonian likes it. <laughs> I'm going to drop some carbon into this little filter tray that I have here because there's space. Uh, just in case there's chemicals being thrown off by the mushrooms, which I imagine there might be that are irritating the Gorgonia. The rest of the corals look fine. I'm not seeing any indication of a reaction, but yeah. So I will show you what that looks like tomorrow morning when I will probably be able to remove those mushrooms just by plucking them out with some tweezers. Oh, what have we here? This is how I store my super duper big, very, very accurate hydrometer. This is the Tropic Marin High Precision Hydrometer. I first heard about this thing from Alex G's Aquariums and I have my beaker set up because of course you need something big enough to float this thing in. And I've discovered that exactly 450 milliliters of water, salt water, whatever you want to test, put in here is the right amount to float this thing. So let's do it. Let me get this out of here. It's very fragile. And when you read reviews of this thing, what people most often say is that they break. So I'm being uber careful. So let's put this in here. Normally I would use two hands. So <laughs> I'm trying to be careful as I can. I never grasp it by the skinny part. I always grasp it below the join. And then I just let it gently go. And there she goes. I'm testing the salinity of the water that's in the display tank upstairs. And there's no auto top off. Uh, and there's considerable evaporation based on a mark we put to identify the water line. So this is just to see where we're at in terms of salinity so we can make adjustments with that mark if we need to. All right, let's zoom in here. Looks like we're almost 1.0255. So I will need to add some RODI water to the tank upstairs. All right, my little skimmer hack here. The pads in here are getting pretty dirty. I gotta rinse that out. Whoa. <laughs> oh yeah gotta go to think if you don't catch it in a filter pad it's going back in the water see and I can do that with one hand and I have fresh pads right here and hey to practice good habits I'm also gonna clean the skimmer cup even though it's nowhere near as full as it usually is I'm gonna clean it right now because you know if there's one thing I've learned over the past couple months of being sick on and off it's that I might not feel this good tomorrow all right, so I didn't scrub it, but I did empty it. I have my new pinky filters installed in the Reef Girl Skimmer Cup hack. Clean the sponge. I don't think it really needs to be in there, but I feel like it maybe dampens a little bit of the salt spray from the water splashing down this raceway here. And then I've got my uh, really high-tech little uh, lid here. And so what happens there it really stops the water splashing up onto this light. Uh, I noticed a huge improvement in that. Place the filter pad in there. All right, so I got this little filter tray from a company called Intank, and I really like it because it takes the place of a filter sock and leaves me the space underneath to do things like wrap a bag of carbon in a pinky filter and drop it in underneath. One thing I will say is these things fit extremely, extremely tight. First time I put it in, this went down inside here and it was awful to try and get it out. So now the carbon's in, hopefully the Gorgonian will get a little bit happier. Okay, so here we are the next day. The Gorgonian looking super happy again. So who knows, maybe the carbon helped. Maybe not, but I'm glad it's looking good again. And we got this going on again. Yeah, 
Long tentacle plate coral is getting aggressive. So I'm gonna reach in and move the Bricordia back. Okay. Move it away. There we go. I always worry that I'm gonna somehow damage the tentacles, but they seem to let go right away. Okay. Oh yes, indeed. I was able to completely remove one of the two mushrooms. The foot just totally let go and it has that dead coral smell, like the really intense smell. Um, when you look over here, you can see that spot. It completely detached from there. So I know things will grow back. This one here, I did try and lift it, but it's still pretty firmly attached. So I don't know if it has that strong a will to survive, I might just leave it. And at least this one is out of the way now. Everyone knows how quickly Aptasia can spread. So I decided while I waited for a peppermint shrimp to arrive in an online order, I would isolate the offending frag. I put it in a specimen box hanging over the edge of the frag tank and the place I put it was getting hit by random jets of water. So I kind of wondered if that would maybe substitute for proper flow. So I left it here for a few days. Okay, I think I'm gonna have to feed this tank now. Oh boy, that's a big one too. I noticed this mushroom was getting smaller and smaller, so I decided to give it another try and see if I could get it off the rock. Actually, it didn't take long and it went really well. As you can kind of see there, the clownfish was not happy. This was one of the main mushrooms in her little empire. And surprise! I could see once the large mushroom was gone that it left behind a baby. Oh yeah, it's pretty jankety. But you know, at least it's something. Because I have had some splashing going on down here and uh, this will help. Same thing over here. You know what? Not 100% perfect, but at least if there's a stray splash, then uh, hopefully I won't have burnouts in my power bars. Okay, upgrade to the air intake that pushes air into the skimmer. We put this pipe wrap on. We noticed because the outside air is cold, there was condensation on the outside of this pipe. So. That was all kind of running down and dripping onto the windowsill, which is wood and bare wood in some spots. So we decided it was better to try and prevent that by wrapping the pipe. And hopefully the sponge will absorb any condensation there might be because it's not completely sealed. Every night as the lights ramp down, the angelfish get really active. The last pair I had did exactly the same thing. They chase each other all over the tank. Well, I guess I should correct that and say, the male chases the female. It was getting to the point where I was a little concerned that this chasing behavior might be contributing to stress for her that was causing a bit of the outbreak of lymphocystitis that she was suffering. So I shortened the photo period by an hour at the end of the day, thinking to give her a little bit of a break. It seems to be working because she's a lot better. And yep, this is why I always have a lid on my tank. As it turned out, my online order was delayed by a day. So we will see what we have alive in here. I'm not too worried about the corals, but this is the order that contained the shrimp. Unfortunately, that's one of the things I wanted the most. And thanks FedEx, I believe you killed it. We continued moving ahead with getting the rocks put up in this tank and finally got the back section built. This was tricky. I had several pieces that I had to join together. There's putty involved, but not a lot. 
and we didn't want to leave anything to chance so we made sure that anything we thought might tip over or be dislodged easily had putty to keep it in place. It turned out pretty good. Wow, I think this is a baby trochus snail. Check it out, it's very tiny. So when my shrimp arrived dead, I tackled the Aptasia on this frag just by scratching it away. I took a stiff brush and scrubbed and scrubbed and scrubbed. You can see this part of the frag plug that's exposed. That's where the Aptasia was anchored and I haven't seen anything come out yet. It's only been a few days, so we'll see if I managed to get rid of it all. And if I didn't, well, I finally did get some peppermint shrimp. Fortunately, the LFS had peppermint shrimp. So I picked up three, two good sized ones and a really tiny one. And after a day or so, they've settled in well, hiding behind the heater in the frag tank. Guess what this is? Yep, this is branching GSP. I can hardly wait to see it grow out. Finally, here's a sneak peek of the finishing touch for my aquarium stand. If you've been following along, you'll know there was a big problem with matching the size of the tank and the size of the stand. This is how we made lemonade out of lemons. I decided on a half inch tempered glass polished shelf. So I hope you enjoyed this video of selected highlights of what the heck has been going on in the month of January with my reef tank. If you enjoyed the video, why not give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you haven't already. There's lots to come. Thanks for watching. Stay safe, everybody.